Hello, once again, welcome back. This is Shanik Professional College of Science and Technology, and the course is your favorite certificate in food, nutrition, and dietetics. We have two examining bodies. One is Shanik Professional College Examiners. And two, we have Kenya National Examination Council. We want to go through the course overview and uh, get to understand what is this nutrition and dietetic course all about. As you know, or as, as, you, as you're going to realize, lifestyle diseases are highly prompting the high demand of nutritionists and dietitians. So this course tackles all aspects of proper diets, weight management, and the health, among others. A nutritionist could start a consultant farm or work in a healthy facility. The opportunities are very unlimited. It means there are more opportunities for nutritionists in the world. There are more opportunities for dietitians in the world. So, welcome back again as we take you through the course module one, uh, the first chapter, Introduction to Nutrition and Dietetics. Later, we will look at nutrition care process. We also look at human anatomy and physiology. We will look at information communication technology as a demand to this cause. We are also looking at uh, communication skills as a need in this cause. Why? There is that which you need to learn and to make communication effective on what you know all the knowledge you've uh, acquired. You must have that courtesy that you should apply in our workplace and all in the job market. So welcome and uh, join me as we get to introduction to food, nutrition and dietetics. Chapter one, introduction to food, nutrition and dietetics. Food is a prime necessity of life. The food we eat is digested and assimilated in the body and used for its maintenance and growth. Food also provides energy for doing work. Man or humans have exhibited much thought and foresight in cultivating a variety of grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and oil seeds, and in rearing birds and animals for use as food. Nutrition deals with the way in which the human body receives and uses all the substance or materials necessary for its growth and development and for keeping it in good condition. This begins in eating food. The food swallowed then digested as it is passed through the stomach and small intestines. During digestion, the food is broken up into simple substances. This I'm sure you also were taught during the sciences in high school, the sciences in your former institutions where you've been studying basic sciences. So welcome as we get to tackle this course to understand, to bring on board all those basic knowledge that we know and uh, as we get to increase in knowledge on the same cause for nutrition and dietetics. Take a breath. Whew. 
These are absorbed. We are talking of the simple substances that have been broken down from the food that you've taken. So they are absorbed into the bloodstream and carried to the liver where they are either stored or changed further or sent out to other parts of the body for use as required. I am realizing something here. In, in getting uh, this food utilized in our bodies, there must be a process completed. One, you must take action to getting this food to swallow it. This food must undergo a process of digestion. And after digestion, it must go through the bloodstream. The valleys must absorb these food substances. They will carry the food one-on-one -on -one to the liver. There is a reason as to why we are introducing all this. After food has been uh, carried to the liver, they are either stored if the particles or the simple substances of food are important for the body. They are stored and absorbed to the body uh, uh, bit by bit, slowly by slowly. So, all changed further, all sent out to other parts of the body for use as required. So the body system has its own structure of absorption. So, welcome. As we get to understand, now that food is very important, you see, we live, we, we, we eat to live. We don't live to eat. We eat to live. And when we have taken these substances, all the food, uh, the food and uh, the nutrients, there is that uh, effect to the body which is either positive or negative. Walk with me to some definitions that are necessary during this course. One is the food we are talking about. Two, I mentioned nutrients. And three, I am talking of a nutrition status now. We will get to understand what we really were talking about. And don't forget that this only is found at Chanik Professional College of Science and Technology. Keep enjoying the learning. Enjoy. Enjoy it. Now, food is defined as anything solid, liquid, all semi-solid, which when ingested by putting it into the mouth, digested and assimilated, thus nourishes the body, and that is food. The, again, food can be defined this way. The edible stuff that provides humans with nutrients and that is all. Edible stuff that provides humans with nutrients. Broadly, it is classified as cereals, pulses, vegetables, fruits, milk, eggs, fresh foods, fats, and sugar. That is the food we are talking about. Number two, work with me to understand nutrients. These are defined as those chemical substances which are supplied by food and are needed as a source of energy and as a structural material for every cell of the body. These are constituents, you know, in, the, in other words, number two, we can define nutrients in this way. They are constituents in food that must be supplied to the body in suitable amounts. Sweet, note this, suitable amounts, not excess amounts. 
suitable amounts, required amounts. They include proteins. With the time, we get to understand what the proteins are. Number two, uh, that is nutrients. We have fats, carbohydrates, minerals, water, and vitamins. Number three, definition number three, nutrition status. What is nutrition status, students? It is defined as the extent to which a customary diet meets the body's requirement. <laughs> there is a customization. When we talk of a customary, from the word a custom, defined as the extent to which a customary diet meets the body's requirement. In other words, it is it signifies the condition of the body after the consumption of food. Yeah. So, nutrition status, I can now add as a diminution. It is the condition of the body after consumption of food. That is the nutrition status. Maybe there might be other ways you can define this. But I've given you the best, the best tool to be taken as your choice. It can be assessed, you know, there is assessment. We are coming to assessment. The condition of an individual, individual's health influenced by the utilization of nutrients uh -huh. is also another definition. The condition of individual's health is influenced by the utilization of nutrients. Therefore, I want to put it clear that nutrition status is the individual's health utilization of nutrients. Yeah. So I would like to make a statement and say it can be assessed by dietary survey, anthropometry, clinical and laboratory investigations. I want to define these some words that I have mentioned here. Assessed by dietary survey. For example, when someone is unwell, when you get to the hospital, the, 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 the clinical doctor will just, uh, the, that is, that, uh, that on the, at the consultation desk will just take a survey on the kind of uh, diets you've been on. When they, especially when they realize that diet is a problem with your health. So they have to take a survey. What about the cabbages? What about the kales? What about the carbohydrates? Uh, carbohydrates, those are energy-giving foods. What about them? Is it that maybe you are taking uh, excess, in excess, you are, not, uh, you are not temperate in whatever you are taking? Temperancy is the case here. But I want us to look at dietary survey. So the clinical, uh, the clinical officer or the consult, the consultant, that is the the medical consultant, will take time to take a survey on the kind of foods that you take, the kind of diet you've been on. Yeah. So we also have anthropometry. In anthropometry. I would like us to understand in not not no in uh, in not only in one way, but in more than uh, more than two ways. But firstly, I would like to let you know that when we talk of anthropometry, this is a standard analysis, a standard analysis on uh, how your diet came to exist. 
uh, or to came to uh, a point of application and how you've been uh, taking into consideration of the same so let's take a break as we get to get uh, to understanding on the terms that I've mentioned here get to a short break as we get back yes welcome back welcome back welcome back we were defining some terms which i had mentioned that is dietary survey and i had said that this is a, a, a step by step analyzing the kind of diet that a, 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 a said individual has been on um, and this comes about uh, due to the lifestyle issues which uh, uh, triggers to dietitians taking up the survey. Second is anthropometry. And as I said, anthropometry is a, a scientific study of the measurements or proportions or measurements and proportions of the human body. It is not just proportions of just the human body, but of the nutrients consumed by a person, thus leading to the proportions in the human body. Now, another thing is clinical, clinical assessment. This is done by a clinician uh, interrogatively doing an assessment to be able to come into a conclusion of what issue the body is suffering from or the challenge rather an individual is having that is caused by the diet. And lastly, laboratory investigations. This is a state where samples are taken to the lab for investigations and assessments done in general. And that is what I can say for now. Now, I'd like to take you to understanding now what is nutrition. We have understood what food is. Nutrition, uh, you, uh, nutrition now is taking up in place this way. Nutrition is the combination of processes by which the living, I'm having, uh, an, uh, I'm just insisting, living organisms receives and utilizes the materials necessary for the maintenance of its function and for the growth and renewal of these components. Wow. So there is a combination of processes, nutrition, by which living organisms receives and utilizes nutrients, thus nutrition, nutrients necessary for maintenance and function and growth and renewal of the body cells, thus body parts, thus body components, yeah. Nutrition is that condition which permits development and the maintenance of highest state of fitness. And this comes up as the best definition for you that you can, you know, guess easily and get and make yourself comfortable. You don't have to take up a store, you know, I, I was once told by my, my lecturer, uh, that's a professor, that when I, I, I get to a point that I'm called a senior student, uh, you know, a senior student, uh, this is because we have junior uh, students and pupils, but when I'm called a senior student, it means I'm a student uh, at a higher institution, uh -huh. when you are upgrading. You don't have to copy and paste statements. You need to come up with a way that you can make uh, statements 
uh, to be perceived as original. You must be real. You must be original in your statement. So I want to give you a challenge. We have said nutrition is a, combi is, is a combination of processes by which living organisms receives utilizes materials necessary for maintenance and function and growth and renewal of these components. Wow. And I wanted to make it easier for uh, humans by saying nutrition is that condition which permits the development and the maintenance of the highest state of fitness that is nutrition the condition which permits the development and the maintenance of the highest state of fitness so in nutrition there is something that is coming up here high state of fitness so we are looking unto a point of fitness so at one point of this course we will get into physical science, physical sciences, and understand more about fitness. Thank you for now. And also, it involves the process or activity by which the human body receives and uses all the food necessary for it is grown. It is the science of food, the nutrients, and other substances therein, their action, interaction, and balance in relationship to health and disease. It is the science of food. So nutrition, what is nutrition? It is the science of food, nutri nutrients, and substances therein, their action, interaction, and balance in relationship to health and disease. At least by now, food, nutrition, and dietetics is now clear. We are looking at the science of food, the nutrients and substances in that food, their action and interaction inside the body the balance in health against diseases that is nutrition we will look at the history of nutrition briefly as we prepare uh, for the next lesson in our, uh, in our, in, uh, as we prepare for our next lesson. We want to look at history of nutrition. Briefly, nutritional discoveries from the earliest days of history have had a positive effect of, on our health and well-being. I have a table that I'm going to post to your class wall and you will analyze later. I will share my window live in our next lesson. And we will have to analyze the hist uh, and look at and uh, understand the history of nutrition. The word nutrition itself means the process of nourishing all being nourished, especially the process by which a living organism assimilates food uses it for growth and replacement of tissues. This is history of nutrition. We are trying to understand the basis. Therefore, I can say, nutrients are substances that are essential to life, which must be supplied by the food. Today, more than ever, obtaining nutritional knowledge can make a big difference in lives. We have air, soil, water pollution, in addition to modern farming techniques, which have depleted soils of vital minerals, which have depleted vital soil minerals. 
the widespread use of food additives, chemicals, sugar, and unhealthy fats in the diet contribute to many of degenerative diseases, such as cancer, heart disease, arthritis, osteoporosis. <laughs> Here is a brief history of the science that offers hope of improving health naturally. I think now nutrition comes as an advantage. We are getting back to natural remedy. The first recorded nutritional experiment is recorded in the book of Daniel in the Bible. Daniel was among the finest young men captured by the king of Babylon when the Babylonians overran Israel and was to serve in the king's court. He was to be fed from the king's table of fine foods and wine. Daniel objected and preferred his own choices, which include phages, that in brackets we call phages are under pulses, pulses, pulses. So the next day when we talk we and when, when we mention pulses in our class, put in mind of vegetables and water. So, this is what happened to Daniel. The chief steward was afraid of his head, but agreed to, to a trial. Daniel and his friends were allowed to continue with their own foods, not defiling themselves with those of the king. The 20th century became instrumental in helping to open the age Babcock, better known for Babcock test for milk fat that bears his name and conceived the idea to feed dairy cattle from just one source, all corn plant or all wheat plant. I'm just mentioning someone here. We are looking at the history of nutrition. Number one, from the book of Daniel, demarcated from the Bible. Number two, we are looking at one person by name. Uh, there is one person uh, here we are going to look at. The 20th century became the era of the golden age of nutrition. When? Most of the discoveries of nutrients took place. We have one person here, Stephen Beckock. Stephen Beckock was conceived, was sorry, was instrumental in helping to open the age. Beckock, better known for the Beckock test for milk, milk fat, that bears his name and conceived the idea to feed dairy cattle feed from just one source, all corn plant or all wheat plant. So we were uh, looking at nutrition history. We have seen nutrients being discovered from a uh, uh, corn plant or wheat plant. And that, that, that is just to say from a few of those which we had just taken for this class. In our next lesson, we will check on the highlights of history of nutrition. And this we will post to your wall for your assessment study and uh, for Peruso. I wish you well. Goodbye. Don't forget that this only can be found, can be studied well, and you will be made a professional only at Shanik Professional College of Science and Technology. Goodbye.